one of the things that's kind of exciting right now is we seem to be at this moment where there is a new interest in going out into space. Uh, we just saw the remarkable mm. SpaceX launch yesterday. Is that important? Do we need to send people out into space to explore uh, at least our solar system, perhaps beyond? I mean, not just send robotic uh, vessels out there, but actually to send people out there. Does that matter? I think um, you gain certain things with each approach. Um, first of all, I think the, uh, the divide that people perceive between um, human exploration and robotic exploration is a false one. If you look at the history of, for example, um, reconnaissance of the deep ocean, for example, the, the exploration of Earth has always been characterized by humans working together with robotic probes. And so the thing that you might gain, for example, in sending people to space is you gain a little bit of um, real-time decision making. You might gain some ability to do more complex tasks, not even if just for the fact that a human can do complex tasks, but that you can design something that might break and then could be fixed. Um, many times when we design things like uh, Mars rovers, they behave in a very delicate manner, literally scratching the surface of the planet, um, or in these days, uh, doing some drilling. But they, they are designed in such a way to um, be a little careful of them, because there's no repair crew, right? So you do gain certain things by sending human beings um, into space that you might not necessarily have. Um, however, it is much, much more uh, resource heavy to send people to space than it is to send something like a robot. Uh, you have to, for example, make sure the astronaut survives. Um, <laughs> and many of the places that we're thinking about going are very far away. And you know, that's, that's an experiment that um, we have very little way of testing for. The effects, for example, on the human body of traveling um, to Mars. We have data from the ISS, the International Space Station. Um, but that even is not a, a perfect experiment for what happens when people live out beyond Earth. So, um, you know, I think that there has to be strong motivation but um, isn't, isn't to this, have it be isn't, human. Isn't this ultimately not a science question? I mean, we, we don't really, we're not debating this question of, you know, to send people out there because we want to see how far we can push the science. It's there's something deeply emotional, deeply attractive about the idea that humans could go out and visit another planet. I mean, it's it would be mind-boggling. Right? I think that depends on who you talk to, though. Um, you know, I think uh, I do a lot of conversations with um, kids and teens about envisioning themselves in space. And, and what you find is that the, the trope of every child wants to be an astronaut is actually not true. Um, <laughs> go figure. Kids are people. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the, the great things is um, that I hear all kinds of opinions of, you know, uh, my favorite one was we should send Congress there, and <laughs> if they can cooperate enough to come home, they can have their jobs back. So. <laughs> so do, does anyone want to make the case for the importance of human space travel? Yeah, well, I think, um, I've been an advocate of one-way missions to Mars for many years uh, because I think that's the only way humans will ever go to Mars. Uh, the price tag is too great if you bring them back. Um, this is not a suicide mission. This is setting up base camp for what will become a permanent human presence on the red planet. And uh, over a thousand years, I think we could build it up to be self-sustaining. Why would we want to do that? Well. Um, uh, one reason is as a sort of lifeboat. If something truly terrible happens here on Earth, at least uh, hu humanity or our culture or something. At least a few be, people get be, to survive kept, there. Uh, <laughs> right, but, uh, but to be self-sustaining, you'd need a colony of uh, many thousands anyway, maybe millions. Um, it, it, this, you wouldn't do it for the science. Um, I, I think uh, it's pretty, pretty clear that... Um, that we could do a lot of the, the science, for example, on Mars uh, robotically, but, but we would do it, as you said, for a, uh, a human adventure. Uh, and as a I have a colleague who's a virus expert who basically says viruses are mutating all the time. At some point, one is going to mutate, it's going to kill us all. So he therefore advocates um, you know, <clears> some <throat> people living on the moon or on Mars to kind of separate us off. And we all yeah. But I, I think this lifeboat idea is very misleading um, in that it, yeah, <laughs> It, it only works if you talk way, way, way into the future where a colony or a, any kind of established living space and encampment on another world is 
completely self-sustaining well, yeah. um, because <laughs> you know the the idea that people are going to go to Mars and then just be able to live there without resupply from the Earth, I think, is a false one for a very, very, very long time and possibly forever. Um, so it it's not the same thing as if you put people there, then, you know, oh, you have a backup copy and and then everything is magically fine. There's still, you know, billions of people living on Earth that then die. So <laughs> cold comfort for them, I guess. <laughs> Um, but I think it's a very difficult problem to have a completely self-sustaining um, space. I, I would see it as being more possible on somewhere like Mars than somewhere like the moon. Um, but it's yeah, still moon it's still very difficult. And a lot of the ideas that are out there are really just that. They're just ideas. Um, you know, planets aren't empty pools, dry planets that you just refill with like a hose. And then it's exactly the same as it was before. Planets are very complex systems. And but, but it's, uh, and so are humans. And I think one yes. of the things that's often overlooked is that it's no good just sending astronauts and a few pigs and cabbages and things and uh, you know, let them get on with it. Uh, where, uh, as I'm sure you know, there's, there's more cells in your body that are not you. They're m microbes and your own body. So you have to send all that microbiome. Well, that goes with the astronauts. But then... That's only part of the great web of life, of microbial life, which is incredibly complex, incredibly rich, uh, and has all sorts of checks and balances. Uh, we don't know what is the minimal subset of terrestrial microbiology that could be self-sustaining on another planet. We basically have to send our version of Noah's Ark there as well. Right, but, but, but you have to have all those microbes as well, you see. And that's, uh, that whole microbial realm, as I said earlier, is not really understood. You don't know what is that minimal set. Um, and so you might get there and, well, you've left one particular bacterium out and then the whole system is unstable. We don't know what that is and it's very, very hard to figure it out.